So as part of our trip, we went to the UK so that I could go to the Aga cook shop. And all of this is what I bought. So now I'm going to do the unboxing for you to show you what exactly I got to go with my Aga cooker. If you're not aware of what an Aga cooker is, it is, I think, the most amazing stove, <laughs> oven, <laughs> that you can ever have. And if you check out my previous videos, you could see when we got ours installed in December and me using it to do some breakfasts and other stuff and I'll be having more in the future once the kitchen is completely renovated. The kids are outside so you might hear them a little bit. Okay, how about I just move this one to the side and that gives us a lot of space. So one great thing about this uh, stove, the cooker has four ovens. So there's a roasting oven which if I'm looking at the stove it would be the upper right one and that's four to five hundred degrees Fahrenheit and underneath is a baking oven which is three to four hundred degrees the higher up you go the more temperature you get so if you want to grill something you would put it on a pan at the very top of the roasting oven and that would give you your grilled steak or something you do on a, on a griddle and of course the baking oven if you have dishes that need to be around the 300 degree mark you put it closer to the bottom 350 in the middle, close to 400, you'd have that at the top of your oven. So that's how, how it goes. The, the heat rises, of course. And on the other side, the upper left has the simmering oven. And there's um, an open grid on the bottom of that one that goes down to the next oven, which is the warming oven. So that's like the lowest temperature. Simmering oven is like two to 300, and that would give you a slow cooked meal for the day. You put your nice cast iron pan in there with your soup or your stew, your chili, your chicken, whatever. Put that in there in the day and then you go out the door in the morning and come back and it's done. Underneath it's a warming one which is great if you want to have like if you made a, a pie or you've taken something out of one of the ovens when you cooked it earlier and you want to keep it warm for a dessert or a custard or just keeping your plates warm even. So that's the lower left. So one great thing about this stove is that you don't actually have to use the shelves in it if you have the right pans. And if you have the right pan, it goes edge to edge. So as you uh, slide it in, it has runners that the pans run on. So you get the full width of every oven. And it might look kind of small from the picture in the front, but it's very deep. It's sort of like taking your conventional oven and you know your, your oven's normally wide and not so deep. You just turn it sideways. And I can actually fit my great big roasting pan I bought. Um, I can't put the lid on it because it has a big handle, but I can fit the whole roasting pan with like a 28 pound turkey in there and do that that's what I did for Christmas time actually I put it in the slow cook oven I just covered it with tin foil and I roasted it overnight but that's another video so a couple of good things um, that I wanted to, to talk about with these ovens is that at the Aga cook shop you have what you would call a half shelf so this shelf is the width of the oven but only half of the depth so you could put this one in and then you can slide another one on the same runners in front of it so it actually gives you lots of opportunity to do different meals this way. So this one is a silver anodized shelf and uh, it fits directly on the runners and it's for of course any of the Aga cookers. I, I don't believe there's any difference in size of them which makes it great because my cooker is second hand and it's from the 90s and I could buy a new pan for it today and it, it still fits. All the dimensions are the same. So this is 34 by 22 centimeters and it says half size. So you know that it fits in, but you can shove it to the back and you still have room in the front to put something else on those same runners. So I got one of those guys because I didn't have anything that was half size because I only had conventional cookware. Now these I'll talk to about in a minute because they go with a different pan. And this one's a box. Let me shimmy it out of the bag. And actually, there's something else in here. Ah, so the oven is made of, um, like, the, the burners are an iron, and then the top is enamel, the, the front is enamel, and the sides are enamel. And this is actually a razor blade. Probably you can't really see it very well. Hey, how about it? This is a razor blade that you use to scrape any debris. Uh, you can use it for the enamel, too. So the one thing about this oven is that it's always on. This one is a gas one that we have. It's always on. I don't. I know the new electric ones, you can get them so they can uh, do it more on demand. But uh, honestly, we are in the country and we lose the power. 
And if I had an electric oven or electric burners, I wouldn't be able to cook. And this way, even if we were without power for a while, we could still kind of stay warm if we kind of blocked off the kitchen a bit and we could cook food. Another thing is we live in the country so we have a well and a pump which runs on electricity. Now we have a generator, we could use that. We haven't, um, we've had it for a long time but we've actually never had to use it because we don't lose power that often or that for that long I should say. But I mean if you had to you could actually take a pot and go fill it with snow because that's typically when we lose our power and put it on the, the stove and, and you'd get water that way. So. That's another way you could boil it and you can have boiled, fresh, clean water. So that's a scraper to clean it. I think that's it for this day. And in the box, da, 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 it's stainless steel, polished, high grade stainless steel, even heat distribution suitable for all heat sources, 25 year guarantee. It's a skillet stacking lid that's 30 centimeters. So this is actually, it's a cool pan because it was kind of an ingenious idea what they did. You have the lid, which you can cook on like a frying pan because it has a regular style bottom. You know, that's the, uh, the steel there at the bottom, make it really heavy there. But it's also the lid of the bigger pot, which is underneath. So you can use it by itself as a frying pan or a skillet on the top or even in the oven. Or you can close up this guy with that lid and really you could you can cook them both at the same time if you don't need a lid so there's the pot and it has a bit of a, a groove here that this will nest into there you go so now we have a great big humongous size casserole dish it's 30 centimeters which will fit in the oven now I I didn't actually measure let's try this out that's how wide the oven is. So it wouldn't fit in the oven with the handles this way. You'd have to turn it this way or on a bit of an angle kind of thing to get, to get it in. But you could also, of course, use it on the stove top, get your, uh, your potatoes and stuff to a boil, drain off the water, put the lid on, put it in your simmering oven, and then you would have your potatoes for your dinner. Or any vegetable, really, especially a root vegetable. You could do a carrots and parsnips and turnip, whatever. So one of the things about this unboxing is the fact that I am now in the Netherlands and I still got to get back to Canada. So instead of trying to shove that in my suitcase, <laughs> I could put this in my suitcase and I could probably do this and put clothes in there and then it won't bounce around and it won't take as much room. It will still be pretty much just as heavy so we're going to have to figure out how we're going to balance our suitcases. But uh, here's the whole guarantee and how you take care of it. And of course, it's stainless steel. You would use anything like you would normally use on stainless steel. And yeah, just gives you a little guide there. So I'll keep that in there. And we'll put this one down. I guess I'll take a minute to talk about Bakel Glide. I don't know if I will take it out of the package. <laughs> So Bakel Glide is a really thin, thin silicone product. I mean, we actually sell silicone on Amazon and it's much thicker than this. They you line cookie sheets with and, and use it for anything from cookies to chicken, which is what we use it for a lot. But this Bakel Glide is a variety pack. So we have some rectangles and we have some circles and it's all pre-cut. I've seen them use the circles over the burner for the aga to cook eggs and pancakes and, and anything you would cook on a griddle. However, I have this, uh, this is like more because I have some at home already. I use the square because when you put a square piece over a round burner, you have four corners that don't get as hot. So when you're done using it, you just have to kind of grab at the corner. I grab, usually I take two corners, fold it up so if there's any loose crumbs or something, I don't drop it, and I put it to the side. And that's basically my pan and very easy to wash up. Everything just wipes off it, totally non-stick. But I prefer that over the circle. The circles are great for if you want to line a cake pan or something else, which I have done. I've actually put circles in cake pans and then totally forgot they were there after the cake was out and I put it in the dishwasher and it washed fine in the dishwasher. I, I use these in the dishwasher too. So it says it's suitable for all aga cookers. It's actually suitable for any pan if you want to line a pan. And it's pre-cut to fit the roasting tins, the cold plain shelf and the simmering plate. So that's the circle ones for the simmering plate. You never use it on the, the boiling plate. It's, it's way too hot. I think it's um, 
600 or so degrees Fahrenheit for the boiling plate and about 300 for the simmering. So you only ever cook directly as a griddle on the simmering plate or you will totally burn everything <laughs> on the other one. It's very, very hot, which is great for boiling, which is what it's called. So, oh, that's very heavy. I need to lift the bag up. <laughs> Again, we're going to have to figure out how we do this in the suitcase. Otherwise, uh, we looked at shipping stuff separately, which is another interesting thing because AGA in the UK will not ship this stuff to Canada. Actually, I don't even know if they will ship it to the Netherlands because, again, this, oh, I don't have the scale with me, but this is, uh, this is a few pounds. So, <clears throat> we looked into, um, like when we came, we only had four checked bags and there's five of us, so we can actually have a, another checked bag. And one of our checked bags is actually a carry-on size, so we could carry that on and check another bag, like a big one. And we actually brought back my father-in-law's suitcase. So our goal was to give him back a suitcase, pick up the extra one we're missing, plus one to replace that one. And that would give us five checked bags, but again, one is a small size. We actually could pick up three large bags, um, 62, all the dimensions added together make 62. That fits on the plane as a regular baggage. So we could take uh, three more of those and then take that smaller bag we have and just use it as someone's um, carry-on baggage. So we probably will do that because my husband also wants to bring back books. And this is the problem with having, um, you know, all your older belongings further away is that they're hard to get home. And books are kind of quite heavy too. So I looked into extra baggage or just mailing it because when my husband looked up mailing a box um, of toys or whatever he had here, it wasn't seemingly a very large box, but it was like a couple hundred bucks. An extra bag, if I do it now, I get 20% off. If I do it within... 48 hours, 24 or 48 hours before we actually fly out next week, it's only $82 Canadian for a whole bag up to, I think it's 26 kilograms. I can't remember what the baggage regulations are, but it's, it's quite a heavy bag. So as long as we get a bag that doesn't actually weigh a lot all by itself empty, we could probably fill it up with a lot of stuff. And then, so we had to go buy some suitcases. <laughs> That's what my husband's supposed to be doing today. Leaving the house, getting suitcases, although he's looking through his books. We'll get to it eventually. So, what did I get in here? <laughs> this is the Essentials, and it's a set. It's a three-piece set. It's the Aga Cookshop Essentials Enamel Trio Set. And this, obviously, it's a half size, because that's all of it in this size box. Okay, so in this set, of course, they nicely wrapped it in this paper. We have a half size shallow pan. So again, with the half size shelf, I could put this on and I could put the shelf in the front and I could use just one runner for that. I'll probably keep this wrapping for the suitcase because it doesn't weigh anything. And as I've learned, if you stack them the other way around, I think they take less space. At least they do with my Tupperware at home. This one's a little bit thicker. I don't know see it's just a, a little deeper maybe a, another inch deeper than the first one so again if you have um, something it's gonna be a little fattier or something you could put that there and then they got a little bit deeper one here for your actual roasting your chickens and actually you could fit probably two small chickens on that pan right there through those roaster sized chickens you buy at the grocery store pre-roasted. So again, like I said, you put this in the oven like there and then you have room to fit another one in front. And you've only used up one set of runners and depending on how deep your pan is, I think there's five, four, so four sets of runners and then you have the bottom itself. So I think what I've learned from other adventures with stacking Tupperware is that if you take the skinny one at the bottom, medium one, and then the deep one, you actually take up less space. And again, put it in my luggage, the clothes around it, and we'll be all good. So that's a three set. So, oh, one thing I forgot to mention because I put it over here and then totally forgot about it. These grids, um, what's great about these pans, these roasting pans, is that you can put something at the bottom and put that 
and then roast something else on top of that. So you kind of get two for the price of one. You can put your chicken, uh, chicken breast, pork chops over the bottom, and then if you want to have those big portobello mushrooms or some eggplant or even roasted peppers or other vegetables on top, you can just put them on top. And then you slide that in. And again, you still have other shelves you can put in there because this is only half size. So that's what that's for. And the bigger one, of course, is for the bigger one. And flip that in upside down. Oh yeah, you could also use it upside down. I should have said that too. If you actually had a chicken and you wanted to lift it out of its juices to use the juice for gravy, you could put the chicken on that and just put it in upside down. Then you have two handles to lift it back out. Again, same with the big one. Ooh, heavy. I know. We gotta figure this out with the luggage. Okay, let's take this packaging down. <clears throat> Aha. One thing about the Aga cookware, which again, you can only get it there because it's made for the stove. The way that they make their pots is with a flat lid. And they do that so that if you have, oh yeah, it's actually got a little metal loop here holding this uh, label on. Little metal one there. They make the lid flat. So if you had a set of pots and you wanted to put them in the oven because you boiled your potatoes on it, you drained the water off and you want to put it in the oven, one for the potatoes, one for the carrots, one for the turnips, you could actually stack them. I got the one that is for sauces because another thing about them is that they're not very round at the bottom, but they're tall. So when you use it on your burner up top, you still have room for something else up there. So you can have that on the stove and then you can have something similar in size on the other side or maybe three of them. And this one's got um, non-stick coating on the inside. It's called Quan Titanium, reinforced with titanium by Whitford to stand up to them almost anything. So almost anything. So this one has a little lip. So when you're making gravy, you can just pour it out into your gravy boat or even just soup or something you want to pour into a bowl. It's actually quite a good size pot. This is a 2.5 liter pot with lid. So. And of course, all nice, shiny, and new. I love the packaging. Nice, thick boxes. Now, what else do we have here? Okay, I think I'll get to these last. I will go over to this side. Okay, this is the full size roasting pan, which unfortunately didn't come as a set like this, like the half size. I would have liked to have had all three sizes. So this didn't come as a trio, I had to buy um, the pieces separately, unlike the small size, but I, I didn't buy all three pieces, I just bought two of them. So this is your baking sheet. Now again, if you put that Bake Glide on there and pop that in the oven for the cookies, see it would slide directly on the runners. So this is exactly how big the oven, each oven is. These are the dimensions. So it slide into the runners, you could put, um, this would be great actually for steak, with your Bake Glide underneath. Put your steak up there, put it on your top runners of your roasting oven, and cook up your steak. That's that one, and then this is the big one. So this is for your turkeys. Actually, I've seen them put those roasting chickens for them in one, a pan like this. And again, that, that grid that I had for the little one also fits in this one, so you could do your um, chickens. Maybe t chickens are a bit too high, but if you flipped it over, put your chickens in, you could pull the rack out with the four chickens and have all the drippings down there to pour into your other dish to make your gravy with. Or you can uh, put um, other uh, meats below, chicken breast, pork chops, whatever, put your grid shelf on. The other way so the grid is on the top to put all your vegetables on and do roasted vegetables with your, with your meat. So that is that one. And I think I will, again, store it so that the skinnier ones at the bottom it takes up less space. Now the other thing I had in that bag was what they call a cold plain shelf. And it literally is a cold plain shelf. And I have one of these now. What's great about this is that you, you actually can cook on it. So I've used it to cook stuff on, whatever it was, pizza or whatever. I normally put the pizza in the bottom of the oven now because that's the best way to do it. But you can use it as a cookie sheet. Uh, for anything you'd use without much of a lip, right? Because it only has a lip on two sides. You could put your Bake Glide on that and totally use it to cook on. 
Or what's great about this is that, remember how I said the ovens were, you know, the roasting oven is 400 to 500 degrees and the higher up you go, the hotter it gets. So say you need to have something on the cooler side, but your other oven is maybe occupied with the turkey and you want to make a little bit of a, a cool part of the oven, you keep these normally outside your oven, you will slide it in to bisect your oven and then the one below will, will be cooler, especially since this is cold when you put it in, or at least room temperature, it will cool this area because the heat will rise up and this area will stay cooler because this has to come to the temperature of the oven and it takes a bit of time. I think after 30 minutes they say that it's the same temperature as the oven. So if you had to keep something in longer than 30 minutes, then you could flip this one out with another cold one that you have out. But it just it's great because uh, it gives you options with your oven, especially if you don't have a four oven like I do. If you just have a two or three oven and you're cooking a lot of stuff, maybe a big uh, family meal, and you need some more space, but it, you know the, the temperature is not you know, the right temperature. It's too hot, so you need, to, you need to cool it down. That works great for that. So I wanted a second one because I did have one, and because I have four ovens, it would have been you know good to have two of them. And you could also, you could put stuff on it, but I wouldn't put anything um, super heavy on it because it, you know, it would flex. So what I'd said about the, the non-stick saucepan I got is that it had a flat lid. And I almost forgot, I actually bought more. <laughs> so what's great about this is that you can stack another pot on top of it in the oven. So I, I bought a set of pots to go with it. Our other pots at home have plastic handles and they're kind of getting a little bit warped over time because they're actually quite old and uh, where the screws are on the plastic that's kind of popped out a little bit uh, through the plastic. So I wanted to get a new set that actually can go in the oven and be completely oven safe. So not only did I get the pans that fit the runners, I got the pots that can stack in the oven. Ooh, ah, there are three separate boxes inside. Isn't that cool? I love the packaging. But how do I get them out? <laughs> Lipsy out. Ta-da! So, how cool is that? Now, this one is the part of a set not to be sold separately. This one is the 1.5 liter capacity. Well, grab the edge here. So I guess all the boxes are made the same size to fit in the big box, but it's really only the biggest pot that needed this particular size box. So this is the little saucepan. 1.5 liters, this was 2.5 liters for perspective. And this is in a nice, thick pla uh, plastic there. So that's all stainless steel again, flat lid, so you can put your hand in, but you can also stack it. Oh, these are nice. These actually have a, a fabric Velcro tie with your directions for your pan. So it's a uh, peerless performance on an aga cooker and all cookers and hobs. Conducts heat evenly and quickly with an energy saving uh, super thermic wave profile base. It's very flat. That's one thing I know about my AGA that I tried to get a kettle. I ended up going through three kettles because the bottom wasn't completely flat so it wasn't making enough contact to the burning plate which is fine if you have gas or even an electric coil but it wasn't making enough contact so it took forever to boil the water. It wasn't until I realized that, that it wasn't completely flat that's why I was having issues. Flat lids enable stacking in the ovens, maximizing the use of the oven space, Ergonomic fittings, yeah, well, that's the other thing. Because these go in the oven, um, you are going to have oven mitts on when you pull these out. You need a good size handle to get your oven mitt through those holes to actually get it out of the oven without burning yourself. Suitable for oven use, dishwasher safe, and it's 25 year warranty. So again, what I was saying about these is that if I had the saucepan in the oven, then I could take that one, set that on top with its lid, tuck that in the corner of the oven, and then I still have more space in the oven. If you think about the cold plain shelf as your oven, you can see that if you had that at the back corner, you still have all this space around it to put your other pots. So that's really what's great about the aga. Uh, it keeps a bit of an air gap between the two pots so the heat can still go in there around for good heat distribution. So I'll put that over here. 
I'll put this lid back in here actually. This one is the two liter one. So it's sort of in between these two sizes. So yeah, I guess I got a good variety of cooking uh, pots. Because I got my very large one. And then I have the 1.5, the 2, the 2.5, and the 3. So I got all kinds of sizes here. Again with the nice little Velcro piece of ribbon with the tag on it. And there's also the benefits of cooking with stainless steel in here, which we've always had stainless steel pots, so you don't need to convince me. You even have markings on the inside, so if you're trying to fill this up with a liquid to start a, a meal, and you need a liter of water, well there's a liter on this side, or if you're American or perhaps British, you have up to three points on the other side. So you can actually just use this as your measuring cup if you had to fill it with liquid. And again, you get your flat lid that you can stack, right? And I think you could easily, if you've turned your handles the right way, get these three sizes in the oven at the same time. Plus, the oven's quite tall, so you can just set that one there. You probably fit the bigger one over here on this side. <clears throat> so, the idea of the aga is that you start things to boil on top, but you don't leave your, um, your burner plates open for the whole cooking process like you would on a regular hob, where you have your four burners and you have your pots and they're all boiling away and all the heat is going into your kitchen, especially if you're running the air conditioner, it seems a bit fruitless to do that. So the idea is you get stuff started on the top, like your, say your vegetables, um, at, or, your, or your beef stew for example, you get it boiling on the top, put your lid on, throw it in the oven, everything stays sealed up, that way the heat stays inside. This is a radiant heat system, so what you need to have is the heat radiating towards the middle where your food is to actually cook it really nicely. Um, What's great about it is that an electric or say a gas oven, you have like my electric oven, I have the coil at the top, coil at the bottom, so the heat is going this way, but then there's nothing from the sides, so there's there's cold spots in that oven. So in, sometimes when I have the two racks, say I'm making cookies or biscuits, <laughs> I'll put them in and then halfway through I'll flip them around because I know that the heat isn't evenly distributing through everything. It doesn't work like that with a radiant system. And the heat radiates in from the oven roof, the floor, the walls, and the back. It doesn't radiate from the door, obviously, but the door is quite thick and insulated. So it'll keep the heat in, but it doesn't radiate from there. So that is the three liter one. And again, nice thick plastic on the lid, the instructions inside, and the little Velcro tag with the Velcro ribbon over here. And you put that in, and you can stick any of these things on top. And I think I have seen, if you have your handles turned in the right fashion here, which I don't know exactly how I do that, but something like that, you could probably fit, yeah, easily three of these in there. So we'll try that out when I get home and actually can get back into using my oven, because I don't really have these to the edge either. Yeah, you can fit all that in your oven. Plus, that's just one oven. I have this other dish that could go in another oven. I have my roasting pan here with my chickens in it and I got that one with the vegetables of the half size and you could probably fit all this cookware in the ovens and cook a meal, an enormous meal for a family of 20. Okay, so what else did I get? Ugh. Again, we gotta figure out how we're gonna do this in the suitcases. The other things I got are the extras that I um, couldn't really get, it's sort of like this uh, blade, I could probably get the blade somewhere, but, and the Bakel Glide, I did get some off Amazon, but there's some of these things that are, uh, I could get some of these things from Amazon, but maybe not the full set, and also the price, and, and whatever, so there's just easier to buy it there. And that, <coughs> that, <laughs> I got, was this particular pattern, which is the blue, um, sort of like farmhouse ticking, which I really liked. These are the chef's pads. So these go on over top of your burners. Uh, as you're cooking and you want to take something out of the oven, you're like, oh, where am I going to put that? If this is on your burner, your nice chrome shiny burner, put that there. Then you can put your cookie sheet there, your roasting pan or whatever. It just gives you more work surface on the top. You know, and they look nice. And if actually you do get your chrome scratched, you can put this on and hide it. And of course I wanted to get the matching gauntlets. So these oven mitts, and they're single, you gotta buy one at a time and they're 23 pounds a piece. Um, they're quite long. See, it goes right up to my elbow. And they're still, you know, if you have a bigger arm than mine, that would probably still fit you fine. 
but um, I, don't, I don't have a long arm, so I guess if you're a man, maybe it doesn't go right to your elbow, but you to grab onto the pot handle. You know, it wouldn't be too hard to do because they're nice and wide and you got the big long mitt. If you had to reach to the back of the stove to pull it out, you wouldn't touch your arm on the side and give you some horrible scars. So those are about 23 pounds a piece. The tags are on them. I don't have the price of everything because I'd have to go back and look at my receipt, but the price is on these ones. So there's two of them. And then this one I really liked. Um, I've seen them use it on some cooking videos with the Aga cooker. There's no easy way to open this, so I'll just rip it. Or not. I'll just use my knife. And I think this is ingenious, and I don't know why they don't sell this everywhere, but maybe they do. Maybe I haven't looked in enough places. But this is uh, of a mitt, of a mitts, that you put both hands in. And then you reach in and then you grab your casserole dish. So you can bend your hands around the edge of your casserole dish and then you pull it out towards you and look, you're not going to burn yourself. Or if it's greasy or something that could help protect your clothes when you're pulling it out that it doesn't slosh some grease up against your clothes. So I really, really wanted one of these. Cool, eh? And these are all like um, really thick cotton on the outside and then like a terry on the inside. And of course they say aga because that's, you know, that's the cool part. And of course, I couldn't have just those. I had to get the matching tea towels. Couldn't just get one. Of course, I'd get two. These were 11 pounds a piece. And then the other thing is, like, I might have been able to find online because I, I did kind of look at some stuff on Amazon. But there's two cleaning products here. One is for the chrome and steel, and one is for the enamel. So when you're cleaning the ovens um, or the stovetop, you have to remember that it's always on, so it's always hot. So when you're using a cleaner, when you spray it on, you need to work quickly or you're gonna, it's going to cook on. So this is why having the proper cleaner is actually a, a better idea, I think. So it's for daily cleaning of the chrome and the steel and daily cleaning of the enamel surfaces, especially designed to clean warm surfaces without smearing. So that's why I want to get the proper stuff. They also had a wire brush, which my husband said is a welding brush, and I can have that at home. So I can use that to clean um, the actual griddle plates, so the, the, the burners. So they have a, a black lid and a, a silver lid, so you can kind of remember which one's which. The, the silver is for the um, steel and chrome, and the black is for the enamel, so that's how you remember that one. I really wanted to get a bottle of touch-up paint because my husband did nick the side, but you can't really see it, but I know it's there. But uh, they didn't have those colors. They only had something like black and cream and red or something. So they gave me a little uh, enamel, like a chip of the color, and I can go color match it at any hardware store and get like a heat resistant paint. They said I can get that anywhere. So I might do that when I get home, but um, yeah, now I gotta figure out how to get it in the suitcase. So there we go. That's everything I bought at the Aga cook shop. Now let's get it in the suitcase. <laughs>